All right, welcome back to Diesel Talk. This is Tony Salas, back here at it again. Uh, did a quick video in the shop regarding a Ram Cummins 6.7 2015 model. Um, thought I'd talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, the topic is no power, fuel pressure. So you're gonna watch me here right now, I'm gonna describe it. You're gonna watch a few clips from the shop and then you're gonna we're gonna reach a conclusion on this. Hopefully help you out. Uh, the biggest thing is, uh, is pretty much understanding common rail. A lot of guys don't understand common rail, and if you're a do-it-yourselfer, well, you know, that's good stuff too. But uh, when you look at a common rail system, I don't care whose it is, whether it be in a power stroke, whether it be in a big truck, small truck, whatever it is, Duramax and so on, uh, one thing you gotta understand is that uh, common rail has three departments. And the three departments within common rail is the low pressure side, the high pressure side, and then your return pressure. Okay, once again, low pressure side, high pressure side, and also your return. So when we look at a Cummins 6.7 here, I'm going to go use the highlighter here. We're going to see the fuel filter. This is an early model 6.7, and the reason why I tell you is because Cummins on the 6.7 side has changed the fuel filter assemblies through time. After 2015, we saw a second filter added, which is on the pickups. It's located somewhere in front of the of the spare tire underneath the vehicle. So there are two filters on the 6.7 and there are numerous YouTube videos telling you how to replace them out there. So, but uh, that's the low pressure side and all the fuel that fed from the tanks, as you can see item number one and item number two way over here. Okay, that is all part of your low pressure. So the fuel pump or the lift pump, like I like to call them, is inside the fuel tank and therefore it feeds fuel up to the fuel filter. So therefore there's our fuel filter right there. So, but in this case, well, in any case, uh, the lift pump itself is like in many traditional diesels has sent fuel from the tank over to the high pressure injection pump. So on this model that we're showing here, we're showing a CP3 pump right here. As you know, for two years, two and a half years, uh, Cummins 6.7 used the CP4, but then they're back to the CP3. I know all that story. But in this case, that's the injection pump. Now, with that said, when you're dealing with a low rail pressure issue, you have to keep in mind that in order for the high pressure side to work, any of the injectors and the pump to do its job on the high pressure side, that is, you got to know that, hey, it needs fuel from the tank. You got no fuel from the tank? It ain't going to work. End of story. So the truck came in with a... Um, a low power, it had other issues, by the way, it had many issues. And like many trucks that I get here, you know, they come in with a lot of issues. But uh, what happened was, is that um, the truck had, let's see, it had a DPF issue. So we had to take care of the diesel particulate filter issue. And then it had a, um, oh God, I'm trying to forget everything, but it had other issues. <laughs> but eventually I also had a low pressure issue. So I had an intermittent low pressure issue. So the first time I drove it, um, after I did the, the, the regeneration and you know did the dpf and the sensor issue and all that um now we're addressing the low pressure issue because you know when i get a diagnostic i gotta you know go from one two and three i can't do all three at the same time so i try to figure out what's the first problem what's the second problem what's the third problem and try to fix them all so i'm at the third problem which is low rail pressure okay now i know in a previous video we talked about low pressure on the lift pump side on the 6.7 liter power stroke. Now, this model right here on the 6.7 does not have a sensor that tells me the pressure on the low pressure side, which is the lift pump pressure there. So, so if I get my, uh, let me get my, uh, my pointer over here. Um, we just showed you that the low pressure side is from the fuel tank over to the injection pump. Okay, so now if we look at a 5.9 liter, for example, here you could see a 5.9. Um, the 5.9, this is an early model 5.9. The reason why I know this is an early model 5.9 is because it had the lift pump. Now, where's my pointer here? Hello, let's bring it on over here. Um, right here on the side of the filter, right there, there's a pump. So the early model 03s, 2003 models had the lift pump right there, which I thought was a great idea because it was easy to get to. So therefore, anything before that, all the way back to the tank. So this line would go back to the tank over here. There would be a tank over here. Therefore, that would be a suction, okay? Well, they thought it was a bad idea. There were issues with the pump, supposedly. I never saw it, to be honest with you. Um, but um, it got actually retrofitted or changed over with a in-tank pump. So there was an in-tank pump. When you work on 5.9 trucks that are not Ram or Dodge uh, that have the 5.9, they could have the pump behind the computer on the side of the block 
or they can have it somewhere in the frame. So there were, you know, different kinds of lip pumps that were used, but it was still the same common rail 5.9 injection system there. So that's what you saw. So in this case, what I'm trying to get across is we got a low rail pressure issue for the high pressure side. So the computer has a sensor. So on this model, on this 5.9 right here, we see the sensor located on the 5.9 next to the fuel pressure relief valve right there on the rail. Now he's detecting a low rail pressure. So the computer will command the pressure based on the fact that it's understood that he's getting low lift pump pressure. In other words, he's getting lift pump pressure from the tank. In other words, is the injection pump getting the adequate fuel from the tank? There you go. It comes out of pressure and it comes out of volume. Cummins for the longest time was telling us that we should be testing volume. I, the magic number I used was one liter in 30 seconds. So we would disconnect the line coming out of the filter over to the injection pump. And what we would do there is we disconnect, turn the key on, and see how much volume of fluid came out, you know, fuel, in other words, feeding the injection pump. So in this case, the magic number was one liter in 30 seconds. That was the minimum we like to see. So if we didn't have the volume, then we had prop, a pump problem or a fuel filter. So the moral of the story here is fuel filters, fuel filters. I mean, we could talk about the low pressure, high pressure, blah, blah. We don't got no low real pressure, but the fuel filters, how are they? And when we uh, survey people or ask people when they bring trucks in for diagnosis, we ask them, when's the last time did you replace the fuel filters? You know, so many have, as a matter of fact, on the 6.7 liter, we have had many people uh, have no idea that there was a filter next to the spare tire. They only replaced the one in the engine compartment there. So again, there were two filters on the 2015 and later trucks. So, so what I'm going to show you here is uh, we had, again, we're addressing the issue with the high rail pressure side where it was detecting not enough pressure. So therefore, the first thing we did was let's change the fuel filters. I mean, we asked the customer, when's the last time they, they did the fuel filters? They had no clue. So upon changing the filters, we discovered on one of the filters located next to the engine, there was contamination at the bottom. So we had to suck it out. So you're gonna see Beto suck out a lot of the trash that's at the bottom. So then that's another point that anytime you change a fuel filter, make sure you look at the bottom of the housing where the filter, if it's a cartridge style, like the one on the side of the Cummins, look in there and see if there's trash located there because you might be contaminating the system. And as a sidebar, what is, the biggest enemy of common rail, any common rail, okay? What is the biggest enemy of common rail is contamination. You see, you're talking about thousands of an inch of orifices that are located on the nozzle tip of an injector. So therefore you have to understand that any contamination will do harm to an injector. So contamination, contamination. So who protects that? The fuel filters. So I cannot stress enough the fuel filters. We are at the opinion of changing fuel filters every other oil change. And our oil change intervals are about three to 4,000 miles. So yeah, every 8,000, it's cheap security. And if you know the thousands of dollars that are involved in replacing injectors and pumps, you would understand that. So it's cheap insurance to do the filters. So again, we're gonna diagnose this. You're gonna see that the fuel filter is dirty. You're gonna see Beth doing that. And then at the end, we're gonna look at the desired and actual rail pressure and we'll go from there. So. Stay tuned, keep watching. All right, we're trying to take a look at the inside, but you can't see it, but there's a lot of crapola down there. So we'll try to get it zoomed in. What we're doing is uh, we're sucking out. Trying to get all cleared up. And yes, we got this big vacuum thing, so we gotta get a small one. This is the the new one I got us, so Beto says that it looks good uh, inside in storage. So we got the new one. He's using the old one over there. That's what he's embracing over there. So trying to suck out all the fuel and all the crap on the bottom of that fuel filter housing. So. But uh, if you ever needed something, if you got an air compressor, let me tell you, these things are great for pulling, uh, evacuating fluids, sucking out stuff, bleeding brakes. So we highly recommend this. Okay, what we're doing is we're priming the system. So I could do the Kiana engine off, but using my scan tool here, we're turning it on and off here. So we're priming the system. So one of the things we're gonna look at as we get started, we're gonna look at fuel rail pressure. So, so therefore we're gonna set it up for that. Priming it on again, turn it on right there. 
So, in this case, I'm going to pull up fuel rail pressure. There's fuel rail pressure commanded. And then we're going to look at, by the way, if you can't see it, there it is, commanded pressure. And we're going to look at actual pressure. So, unlike other vehicles that I've worked on, usually when I command the pump on, it stays on as long as I want it to run. So, but this one times out. So we're going to do it a few times. We're filling up two fuel filters. So I got Beto down there actually. Uh, he's actually uh, telling me when the pump stops working. So, all right. So therefore we're going to go on a test drive, looking at commanded pressure and looking at the actual pressure. See if those two meet each other. So, oops, hit a button. Okay, we just came back from came back from a test drive, and one of the things we did is we tested it under load, but we had a lot of traffic, so we couldn't record while driving. But what I was going to do is um, show you something here. First of all, you can see commanded pressure because people often ask me, "Hey, Tony, what's the actual pressure supposed to be even under cranking? It's whatever it's commanding or desiring." So right now it's desiring 7251. What do I got? 71. It's it's coming close, and it's always changing. So one of the things I'll do is I'll give some RPM here. And you know, as I give some RPM, there we see 15,000 and we see actual of 15,000. So I give it more RPM, 16,000, 17,000, 18,000. So I'm giving some good RPM. And there you can see that the real pressure 17, 7, 17, 8. We're commanding 17, 9. Yep, so we're very close to each other. See that? So backtrack it a little bit so there you can see both numbers right there so let go of the throttle and we see the pressure drop because we're not demanding as much pressure so there you go so the good news is we're gonna we're almost about closing time but what we're gonna do is we're gonna monitor this pressure we'll see how it runs in the morning so what have we learned here we saw the commanded rail pressure and we saw the actual rail pressure now earlier on which i don't mention but i'll mention now is that when i test drove initially this truck before the fuel filters we had a desire of 22,000. i was only achieving the highest 17 i never went over 17. so one thing is commanded what the computer wants another thing is what it's measuring what's what's it getting you know and your job as a technician would be to say, okay, this is what the computer wants. This is what the computer's getting. So if the computer wants 22, I should have 22,000. If it wants 17, like you saw earlier, it's getting 17, we're supposed to have 17, not negotiable. Now, some manufacturers offer you a spec of how much, you know, from 100 to 250 PSI variants, and you're gonna see it. But all I'm trying to say is, you know, we fixed this truck by simply replacing the fuel filters. That's all it was. So next time you're gonna diagnose and get really involved with the common rail injection system, you know, we're gonna be, you know, you need to look at the fuel filters, do the basics first. And, you know, and another thing that we haven't discussed yet in any video has been the quality of the fuel. Now I have a scheduled appointment for a Nissan Cummins V8. So those of you Nissan Cummins V8s, we got one coming in next week and uh, turns out that we have, uh, Def fluid mixed with the fuel and they flushed it out but they still got a problem so stay tuned for that one we'll be recording that one later on so thanks for watching uh, any questions put it put it in the comments thanks for watching